and welcome to another teaching from Every Nation Christchurch. For more information and resources, visit everynation.org.nz. Check us out on Facebook or download the Every Nation Christchurch app on Google Play or the App Store. You know, we're continuing our series on facing giants. And this week I want to speak about uh, insignificance. You know, the world is crazy at the moment. I mean, with the virus, the, the economy, people working from homes. Uh, how many of you know um, working from home uh, for two or three days has been great, but ah, I just wanted to get out yesterday and go for a walk and enjoy the fresh air and uh, just enjoy uh, outside. And so please, uh, and so I'm just watching the comments here. Uh, so, uh, Candice, I see your uh, son had a birthday. Um, so please uh, make sure I get your WhatsApp number. Um, and, and sometimes we can feel insignificant. Um, you know, what part can we play? And, uh, you know, I, I'm stuck in my home and, and there's nothing more that I can do. And so, you know, the word insignificant means that you feel small, you feel unimportant, um, and uh, and maybe your life is not worth worth much, or you think very little of yourself. But I just want to uh, take a moment and look at God's word, uh, a story of a little boy who had great impact uh, by what he had in his hands. And so I want to encourage. Thanks, Carol. I appreciate your words. Um, preaching a message again the second time in an hour. Love it. I love God's word. And so I want to go to God's word. I hope you've got your Bible. I don't have keynote here. I wish you could see our little setup here. I've got my teleprompter at the back here. Um, but it's good. I want to go to uh, John chapter 6. And I want to, us to read uh, from uh, God's word. Um, verse 1. It says, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. Oh, our prayer is that we would see those signs today of miracle healings, especially those who have coronavirus. And we, uh, we pray that God's hand will be upon each one of you. And he says, and Jesus went up on the mountain when he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to test him. Friends, I want to say to you, in life, life's full of tests. I think this virus, um, I fully believe and convinced it does not come from God. I believe it's part of enemy's plan, but sometimes things are allowed for a reason. And sometimes we are all tested. And I believe God is wanting to test us. How will we respond at a time like this? Will it be overwhelming or will you take control of your life, your family and your situation? Let's continue. For himself knew what he would do. You know, Jesus knows exactly what's going to happen. He knows what the next few months and how it's going to unfold. And I really believe our faith and our trust must be in God and God alone. Philip answered him and said, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, but every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, I love that when I read one of his disciples, and I often think in crisis we find ourselves is, Will you be part of one of the disciples, one of the followers of Christ? Will you be recorded in history as someone who thought differently, somebody who had faith, just like Joshua and Caleb, who had a different spirit? Will you be part of the one? Um, and he said, one of them, his disciples, Andrew, son of Peter, brother, said to him, there's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fishes. But what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves 
And when he had given thanks, he distributed them to his disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish so much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments of five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Friends, what a powerful, powerful story of just um, the miraculous. Um, is that God is at work doing something. And there are three things, when I look at this uh, passage of scripture, there are three things that pop to mind that are really, really powerful. And I want you to put your, your name in that scripture that says little boy. And I, not to say that you are little, but that you've got something to offer. This little boy, I'm sure he felt very insignificant, you know, seeing Jesus perform miracles. He saw these amazing disciples, he saw the crowds, and he was just wee little fellow, just with something in his hand, his lunch, that he was just going to enjoy as being just part of the crowd. But he had something, and my question is, uh, what do you have? And so number one is, when I look at this passage of scripture, are you available for God to use you? You know, the key thing is, are you available? You know, in the busyness of life and the craziness of life, God is looking for people who are available to be used at a time like this. You know, most of us, if I, if I read what's happening around the world, you are all locked up in your homes. And some of you, I know in India, you're not even allowed to leave your home. In South Africa, you've just got to stay put. And so at least in New Zealand, we can go and get food and we can go for a walk in our community. But are you available for God to use? And I pray this, you know, one thing I've learned in life that as we, um, as we become available, as we become available, we see that it takes us of our situation and we look at others. You know, when, when, when people have uh, depression, and or they don't feel good about themselves, they often look inwardly. And so, so we need to look at ways of, of taking ourselves out of our bubble and to see how we can be a blessing to people and be available for God. Secondly, I wanna to say to you, what's in your hand? This little boy in just the normal journey of life had five loaves and two fishes for him to eat. And the is, as we go through life, friends, what do you have in your hand? We've all got something. You know, at a, at a crisis moment around the world, we've all got something in our hands. You know, at every nation, we've some loving uh, campaign a year ago. And if you do have a little bit of financial capacity to, to sow into our Love Our Neighbor uh, fund, uh, we're going to try and help people in our church family who might be struggling at a time like this. Um, it's, it's a challenging time for a lot of people. Some people are in reduced income. Some people are, um, have lost their jobs. And some people, you know, it's, it's challenging for a lot of people. So if you've got a, a, a little bit of capacity besides your tithes and offerings which you give online to the church is that if you can sow to help and uh, so we have a team of people managing that fund to um, to help and so you might have a little but just remember that little can impact 5,000 people that little can touch people's lives and the question is you've got to know what what's in your hands and what are you good at and because God wants to take what you're good at for his purpose and his glory Thirdly, the thing I see in this passage is that this little boy was so obedient. You know, I don't read anything in this passage of scripture that he argued with the disciple, that he, um, that he, uh, that he argues with the disciples and he, he said no 
this is for me, or no, 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 what about me? What about my situation? And so basically he was just totally obedient when the disciples asked for the bread. And you see, when, when, we ask, when we are obedient and we give what God has placed in our hands, he takes it and he multiplies it, not just by one, it's exponentially. Can you imagine five loaves and two fishes? He multiplied to feed 12,000, sorry, 5,000 people. But when we see how many baskets of food that was gathered at the end, it was absolutely amazing. Um, and so, and so the, our daddy God is absolutely amazing. So just think, your little, your word of encouragement, you phoning somebody, and you might think, well, that's all I can do. Let me say to you, do it. Because God can take that and it can be multiplied and amplified um, in an incredible way. My teleprompter is giving me notes. <laughs> um, anyway, so, but God is good all the time. Um, and so, uh, so make yourself available to God. What's in your hands and be obedient. You know, I want to encourage you, you know, feeling of the feeling of insignificance is part of the enemy's plan to rob you, to steal and to take away from you. I want to say to you this morning, I want to prophesy over you that you are significant. You are amazing. You are God's gift to the world. You are significant. And I, if I, if I, I'd love to hear you say that, I am significant. And maybe you can say that, but I won't hear it. But just say it out aloud. I am significant. You know, when it comes to significance, I really believe significance is tied up in three things. Significance is tied up in who you are. Your identity. You know, your identity is so important at a time like this. When you know who you are. Who are you? You see, when you know who are you, you live according to the way you think. And when you think about who you are, that's the way you live. Because the Bible says, out the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I believe out the abundance of the heart, the mouth also speaks. And so the uh, who are you? Thank you for those who have written, I'm significant. I am significant. I love it. I am significant. And so who are you? I want to say to you, you are a child of God. You are a son or a daughter of the Most High God. You are a prince or a princess of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are an ambassador of the Most High God. I love the word ambassador. The word ambassador means you representing a nation and we are representing God here on this earth. It's an incredible job that we've been given that I'm a representative of all my God. And so no matter where I go in my family, I represent God. Where I work in the community, I represent God. Where I, where I go to my workplace, I represent God. So just know who you are. Is, um, is you need to know whose you are. First one, who you are, whose you are. You know, you belong to God. You know, our daddy God, some translations say Abba Father, our Papa God, our daddy God. Do you know that he loves you? You belong, as Colleen said, that bubble, you belong to that bubble that God, that God has created. And if you part of the family of God, you should be in that bubble God. And they love you. God's hand is upon you. His favor, his blessing is upon you. The blood of Jesus is upon you. You know, Colleen and I, as, as she said, I think she did it, is that we've been sharing God in communion every night. And we're planning to do this every night during the lockdown period because we're standing in faith that the blood of Jesus, because we know our Papa God, His hand is upon us, is over us. 
The blood covers my family, my natural family, and my spiritual family. And I'm also praying that the blood of Jesus will cover nations. And I know a lot of you have got family around the world, and I'm praying for your family, that God's hand will be upon the families. So who you are, whose you are, and you need to know what Papa God has placed in your hand to further his kingdom here on earth through his people. Friends, I will encourage you. Use this time. By, by some miracle, God has given us four weeks in, in New Zealand in lockdown. Which means, unless you're involved in the essential services, uh, you are at home. Don't waste your time at home. Be creative, think outside the square, knowing what's in your hands. Because God wants to use what's in your hands to impact people, to advance his kingdom. I've loved watching social media, and I'm going to close with this. I've loved, I've loved watching social media over the, this last period of time, because I've loved to see people's activity. And I'm so blessed by some of the things I've seen, and I might have missed it, some of the things that I've seen um, uh, of what God's place in your hand. For example, I know just some of very creative people. They wanted a Facebook page, every family at home. Um, and this is to support family spiritually and practically. I mean, for a lot of us, new thing, having our kids at home all day, 24-7. And um, so go and like their page, use their page. They've got great ideas to help you. What's in their hand, their little five loaves and two fish, is to be creative to help you. I saw Zena. Uh, Zena, you're very creative. Um, she put out a post yesterday on I spy creative sheets for kids. And uh, and as you, we're allowed to walk around in our neighborhoods and and um people have been putting teddies in their home and and the kids are looking for the teddies and Zena you're very creative use that for God's purpose and his glory keep being creative you know Daryl and Philly if you're watching I mean Daryl and Philly are just so funny and they make me laugh and we need laughter at a time like this Daryl and Philly I love the videos you post they crazy videos of your family love it what's in your hand Besides your worship and your music, you guys are just so funny. Keep putting out those videos. Pastor Nate, you know, um, with his worship, and others are going to be doing the same on our worship nights. And so I, I, I just love, I mean, Mika with her Enya of gathering students, um, uh, Dot Phillips, who's uh, helping the South Africans on their page, and she's very good at connecting with people. The other day I saw Caitlin, who lives up on our hill, um, posted a, a, a video of her playing her cello. Her play, I think it was a hymn. And it was just beautiful. It just did something to my heart. So I really want to encourage and challenge us and anybody who's watching. What is in your hands? Take a moment. What is in your hands? We all have something. We all have something to honor God and to make a difference in people's lives. I want to honor every single uh, person who's in, involved in essential services uh, in our nation, but also nation around the world. Our doctors, our sisters, people who are working in the food industry. Um, I mean, there's just so many. I just don't want to miss people. Um, and so I just, I just know there's so many people who are in the front line of serving us. I want to honor you. I want to thank you. I just want to just say a huge thank you um, to our doctors and our nurses. And I mean, just so many people. The category is very wide, but it's in essential services. They, at this moment, is taking what they've got in their hands to serve you and I and to keep us safe. And so, friends, I want to just challenge you uh, this morning is who who you are, whose you are, and what's in your hands that God has given to you to make a difference. I want to pray for you. 
Father God, I just thank you for this time. Take two for this message. Lord God, I thank you for those who are currently watching and will watch later. I thank you, Lord God, for, for your hand upon us during this critical time. I pray, Father God, and I just want to speak to you just briefly. I want to encourage you to have peace in your heart. You know, the times like that's when, when people are under stress and are challenged, you know, the, the things in our heart, when we squeezed, what comes out. I hope the fruit of the Spirit comes out. Because for some people, when you squeeze, anger comes out. And we know that, and we've heard statistics when a crisis like this happens, and I just pray, if you're watching, that the peace of God would be upon you. That God would refresh your spirit every moment of every day. That you and your family and your household will live in peace. And Lord, I pray also the blood of Jesus over every household during this time. And I pray your hand of protection upon them, wherever our family is around the world. I pray for our people who are involved in essential services, Lord. Pray your hand of protection upon them as they are on the front line of the so-called fighting the enemy, Lord God. I pray that you keep your hand of protection upon the blood of Jesus over their lives, Lord God. And so, Father, I just thank you. I thank you for everybody. And uh, I just uh, thank you for who you are. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I know who I am. I know whose I am. And I know, Lord God, what you've placed in my hand. I know my five loaves and two fish. Lord, I want to use that for your purpose and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us. I've loved being able to share this message again uh, today. I hope there were no technical hitches. I just appreciate you guys. Please share this uh, with people who couldn't watch this uh, now. Uh, I'd love for this message to go out. And just a reminder of what's happening. If I don't have your number, uh, uh, please private message me or something. I want you to be on WhatsApp. That's the quick way of sending out communication to you. Watch out for mail chimps and please be connected. Connected to God and connected to each other. I love you guys. Appreciate you.